and let's get close. And because many of you have probably run into this, and the main focus of this video is what do you do when you got one of these stripped out screws? So this thing's pretty violated, and go ahead and look at this one. And we are, I'm going to explain multiple different tools here. The challenge that we have is when you have strip fasteners, especially when they're really small diameter, we really run into that risk that we're just going to break them, especially on these aluminum bodied uh, master cylinders. Sometimes these bolts are steel, sometimes they're aluminum. Quite often they're steel and aluminum body, dissimilar metals. They didn't have any anti-seize on there. They corrode and they want to stick in there like crazy. So what we don't want to do is realistically, we do not want to break this off in there. And I, I'm taking a risk. We kind of made the joke on should we really do this live or should we just record it? So let's hope that I don't break it off in there. I might, right? Part of being a mechanic, that might be the way it's going to go. So we know this is a real challenge. So uh, give me your number two, Phillips. All right, we love these screwdrivers that have the flank on there to put a to put a wrench on there. And Jesse, this is and here is going to be a really important part of this. Jesse, you were able to get this one loose even without this, right? Yeah. Okay. So he's got one that's going to be fine. Now here is the big determining factor because here's what I got for choices. <laughs> screwdriver I can have a flank on here to do this uh, then we go to what you're gonna see I'm gonna attempt to use as an impact driver tool then I'm gonna smack with a hammer I'll get into a little more detail there or I do have the choice right now and sometimes is the best choice to go ahead and just drill just the head off and the advantage there the advantage there is that if I just pop the head off that's gonna allow me to get the cover off allow me to take the rubber diaphragm out of here. I'm gonna put new master cylinder and rubber parts in here anyway, but what it's gonna really allow me to do is by only popping the head off, that's gonna leave me a set of threads proud of the master cylinder so I could get on their vice grips and then I could use heat to get where I'm going with this. And that would be a way that I could get it out of there. I, what I don't wanna do is break the bolt off down inside the master cylinder where then I have to drill, tap, extract it. I'm gonna try, try to avoid that. So sometimes this is the way to go. But you're probably asking yourself right now, then why am I not doing that? Why aren't you doing why that? Why am I not doing that? Because here's the thing. This, the, the fasteners that have been in here have been in here the same amount of time. If Jesse got this one out with no effort, that gives me a lot of hope that the threads are probably in the same amount of stuck this this here is rounded off damage because of somebody being careless and then quite often because we're using the wrong screwdrivers we've got standard phillips screwdrivers here i know everybody beats us up in the videos it's all over it's it's been a big thing for years now that japanese motorcycles use a different phillips a jis screwdriver i'm gonna put a link uh in the video where uh, there's kits out there and that's just one example go Google JIS screwdrivers you'll see a million different options but uh, JS Japanese industry standard it is not the same uh, shape here come around here As you can see this is intended to be the example of the screw and we're gonna go down here with a Phillips and when you have a Phillips versus a JIS or you have whether it's a one two three either way and you're the wrong size you can see that it can't grip the side of the screw as well, right? And the biggest problem that we have with screwdrivers on a lot of motorcycle and small engine equipment is the fact that the Phillips screwdriver is actually is too pointy or it's too long, okay? So what happens is the point bottoms out and doesn't give us any real estate in here. So what I wanna recommend you do is number one, go get JS screwdrivers. But number two, what you do is get yourself a set of cheap screwdrivers, if you will. And what you do is just grind off that tip. So instead of it being pointed, you'll grind it off here. And then what you'll find is that allows the screwdriver to get in there better. And you're gonna have a ton more real estate. Okay, so let's make sure we're clear. Best method, JIS screwdrivers. You're working in the shop today and you're going, okay, Shane, that's a great idea, I'm gonna get those, but I don't have them today. This is a method, get rid of that point, suck that screwdriver down in there because what we're trying to avoid is this. Get, can you get real close in there again? And you can see that there's, 
there's literally nothing left. When I take, hold that there, and I put the screwdriver on here, you could see that it just sits and spins around. There's no meat. Now going tightening, I can just about grab a little, but they've rounded that off pretty good. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. So now that you know how not to do this, all right, let's fix it. So if I could do this once again, I would try and go in there and get that to work. In this case, we saw it's just rounding off. So th this will not do anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my favorite tool, and that is this impact driver, okay? So what the idea here is, you're going to take and get the appropriate size bit, and I have next to no real estate whatsoever. Now there's a cross in there because it's a Philip Fastener. So I'm gonna find that sweet spot. Now, here's what everybody forgets to do, okay? What you're forgetting to do is you find that little sweet spot and you want to drive that bit and get some fresh get some fresh real estate. You see that? Look at that. I, I've got meat now. I'm even going to do this. I'm going to try just by driving that and see... Now, this screwdriver just does not have, you see the difference there? Might be hard to tell there. It's just a different angle on here. Even though these both say that they're number two Phillips, this one has a better fit. It's quite often that you might go one size larger. You get what I'm saying? The idea of this tool is, is that you're gonna put whatever bit you want on there. You're gonna set it in place. There's an on and an off position here. So I'd wanna be in the off position. Now, here's where you get into trouble though. If I start smacking this with a hammer, I, I don't have any bite here. What am I gonna do the fastener? I'm, I'm just gonna round it off. The hammering action of this is just gonna make it worse. So I'm still not happy. So what I wanna try to do is find my little X. You're gonna see me do this multiple times. I cannot stress this part of the skill set uh, enough. So if I know I'm going that direction, I don't want the tool over here. I want all the free play taken up so I'm against metal. I don't want basically an air gap like I showed on the, the whiteboard drawing. I want all that air taken up so that the moment I smack this with the hammer, hopefully it's going to pull it out. I'm still not feeling like I have enough of a bite, so I'm gonna keep going. A lot of prep work into trying to avoid problems, isn't there? Okay. I'm as probably as good as I'm going to be able to get it, so now I'm going to make the attempt. I'm going to drive it once more, and then I'll make the actual attempt to hit it with the impact handle. Alright, let's hope for some success. This is it. You're supposed to smack it hard. I'm going to kind of give it a light little test to see if it wants to just slip out of there. Did it slip? I couldn't see. My hand was in the way. I'll take a turn. I think yeah. it worked. Yep. This is hard to teach. Oh, look at that. Look at, look at, look at, look at. But the question really is, did I just break the head off and leave a bolt in there? Or do we have... Oh, it did break. Uh, maybe not. So we're not sure. I was with you. I thought it, you know, left a chunk down in there. So. Well, I've seen all this white. I figured it was broken before. Yeah. I mean, right. So anyway, let's summarize this. What'd you learn? What's your takeaways? You people watching on Facebook, what are you learning? How not to strip out bolts. How not to, right? We're learning how not to, right? Here's the big thing. Here's the the hardest thing to get people to do. Keegan, you can vouch for this from some lessons today. Preparation is everything, right? Like, what tools do I need? Do you notice before we started working on this, we looked, okay, what are all our options? Let's grab everything. Let's get ready. This tool, you'll hear a lot of mechanics say they hate this tool. Oh, it's junk. That thing strips more things. It causes more problems. It's because of using it wrong. I talked about this the other day from that book I'm reading right now, uh, 
called uh, uh, Practice Perfect. I'll try and find the link and put it in there too. But they talked about if you keep doing something wrong <coughs> and practicing it the wrong way, you're only going to get really good at doing it wrong. And that's why some people hate certain tools. This thing's awesome. Like I grab my impact driver all the time. I, I mean, I'm sometimes I'm using it on brake bolts. I use it on exhaust bolts. I use it on clutch covers. If I have anything where I feel like it's it's wanting to strip, what I want to do is I don't want to get an air impact out and go blah 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 because I'm going to strip it for sure, right? Like I love this guy because it gives that controlled smack and gives it that kind of jolt that usually will break things free. Once again, this is another great opportunity. And let's be honest about this. This does not work every time. That's just part of being a mechanic. That could have broken off. It is what it is. We, you know, we're taking that risk. And then I would have had to go to some other method. But I'll tell you what, trying things, being careful, being intentional is going to give you a lot of success. You know how to do it now? Yep. Awesome. Hopefully you guys are... Uh, learning the lesson too. I know we've been a little uh, radio silent lately. We'll try and do some more fun videos. We've just been crazy busy. Make it a great day. Keep wrenching. We'll talk to you again soon.